Gather round, heroes, and join me for an in-depth look at the classes of Demio. In this episode, we step into the boots of Aileen, Hunter of the Woods. Aileen's lived her life in communion with nature. As the daughter of the royal gameskeeper, she learned to shoot a bow almost before she was weaned. In combat, she prefers to stay back and pick off her enemies from a distance. She is a long-ranged fighter with a physical focus. Aileen is a master markswoman and a virtuosa with a bow. She uses a unique bow crafted by Archer Master Milt. The Crescent Bow will never weaken nor break, and is modeled after the Crescent Moon. The Hunter is the only one with class cards to summon friendlies, and they fight for her until they die. And a minor point, but Aileen has the greatest variety of class cards available, seven instead of six. The Hunter is generally accepted as the easiest character for new players to use. Her replenishing cards simply convert her normal attack to a ranged attack at the expense of movement and her supporting cards are not complicated. Arrow is her replenishing card, and she has two of them. They let her strike enemies, including Charmed and Lamps, up to long line of sight range. The attack does three damage, or six on a critical hit. Although this is slightly better than her normal attack, don't let it stop you from using it. It's only one extra point of damage, one time out of six, and it comes at the cost of mobility. Die already. When selecting your target, Consider what you can easily hit, but the rest of the party cannot. You don't want them overwhelmed, but you also don't want them with nothing left to kill. Target by threat level, and the rest of your party's abilities. Think about how much damage your party is likely to do to it, and how much damage it will do at the end of the turn. If the party is not in danger from nearby attackers, Target distant enemies which use ranged attacks, since they take additional time for short-ranged fighters to reach while still posing a threat. While uncovering new areas with her first move, Aileen can use her second action to detonate any lamps that monsters tend to cluster around. Find the Die. Be aware that when you're using arrow twice in a turn, you aren't moving. Sometimes you just need the damage, but when the rest of the party can handle a situation, Think about using one action to move, especially when coupled with a melee attack. If you fall behind the others, you might have to help yourself out of a pickle, so watch your back. It's easy to forget she only gets two arrow cards per turn. So if you get a one more thing or a focus potion, keep in mind that you'll need other cards to play, otherwise you'll end up having to move. Hail of Arrows is a starting card and Aileen's only area of effect damage card. It can target enemies including Charmed, Lamps, and Empty Spaces in long line of sight range. Clearing the area. It hits everything in a 3x3 area with Arrows from the Sky, which do 4 magical damage or 8 on a crit. This is great for thinning out crowds and extra useful when there are also Lamps to detonate. Poison Tip targets enemies including Charmed and Lamps in long line of sight range. This one does 5 damage, or 10 on a crit. The extra damage from this card can be called upon when you need just a little bit extra for a kill. The target also gains the Poison status, and takes 1 point of Poison damage at the end of its turn for 3 turns. Since the Poison damage doesn't occur until after the monster attacks, it's mostly useful against opponents you can ignore and let the Poison do its work. This includes enemies that are immobile, distant, charmed, and distracted by a lure. Yelmo Barrera, you have failed this city. Her deep understanding of nature allows her to sway beasts to her cause. Beast Whisperer requires no roll and summons two friendly vermin into an empty space within medium line of sight range. The friendly status is granted to all monsters generated via summons. This allows monsters to be the beneficiary of most positive effects, such as Astral Barrier and Song of Recovery. At the same time, it keeps the friendly from being targeted by enemy attacks, and they will simply be ignored. Their weakness comes from their low health, and poison clouds can decimate a beast army. Rats and spiders both have two hit points. Rats move three, hit for one point of damage, and then scurry off while spiders move two, do two damage, and never miss. Friendlies move immediately after players and just before monsters. 
The exception is when an enemy is turned into a friendly, such as when you toss a bone to a hound or use the scroll of charm. In this case, it will act during its monster move for its first turn, and then shift to friendlies move. Because friendlies move before enemies, and because you don't know if you're going to get rats, spiders, or both, it's difficult to plug a hole with them to block monsters. But it is possible, especially with a lot of them. It's best to place summons a short distance from the desired target, so that they don't get in the way of the rest of the party as they cast fireballs and move into attack. Call Companion is similar to Beast Whisperer, but instead of vermin, it summons a massive gray wolf named Verochka. Verochka doesn't have the friendly status, and is more like a member of the party. The biggest differences are, the party can see through her eyes, and she can be targeted by enemies. You can use Call Companion to reveal an area around a corner or up a set of stairs. This is a safe way to do it on your second action. Though not as vulnerable to environmental damage, having 10 hit points, she tends to run into danger and get herself killed by enemies. Still, every attack on Verochka is an attack not on a player, and this is an acceptable trade-off. Combos. Verochka, or even a favorite spider, might be worth a little investment. Before they run off into the fray, you can give them an antitoxin potion to save them from poison. Not only do bones heal canines 5 hit points, but they give them the friendly status. This applies to Verochka as well, and when she gets a treat, she also becomes invisible to enemies. A third summons, Lure can be placed in any empty space within long line of sight range. This one gives good mana value when recycled. Unlike normal emplacements, this becomes the top priority for all enemies to the exclusion of all others. It draws melee, ranged, and special attacks. Placement of the lure becomes the most important factor. It has to be visible to the enemies to draw them in. Placing it directly in front of enemies won't be missed, but it will reduce their lifespan as it gets immediately thumped. Putting it further away decreases the chance of it being seen, but buys it more time as the enemies rush it. Placing it behind the party will even cause them to rush right past without even attacking. What gets interesting is when you block access to the lure. If a monster can't get directly to it, but sees a way around, it will turn around and leave. The following turn, when the lure is out of sight, it will turn around and come right back. And it will continue this loop as long as nothing distracts it. You can also completely lure lock an opponent by showing it a lure that it can't get to. The monsters are moving. Where to? Like all her summons, it is affected by the regroup card. Combos. Magic Shield and Courage Shandy will help your lure to give a long life of service. Of course, these apply to Aileen's other summons, but this one doesn't run off. Because of this, lures can be aided by healing wards, behemoths, and repeating ballistas as well. Scroll of Charm has no role and targets enemies, including charmed ones, up to long line of sight range. It turns an enemy into a friendly unit for three turns, or if it's already charmed, it increases the duration to three turns again. It will fight alongside the party, even when the party continues to attack it. It's a super reliable way of dealing with nearly any enemy. Be sure to check for immunity though. Be drawn to this. Not only are you harnessing its combat abilities, but those abilities aren't being used against you. This goes double for Berserk monsters, and enemies in the build-up state can be redirected for the party's benefit. You can borrow an enemy's special ability for your own use. For example, the unheard and vulnerability doesn't really help the party, but it's slightly useful for lures, nullifying attackers which come after the charmed unheard. Keep in mind that some enemies aren't the most reliable. An archer will freak out trying to escape if it's too close to its target. And a giant spider has a very good chance of missing, so you don't even want to fight next to a friendly one. Additionally, you might charm an enemy so it no longer blocks your passage. 
A charmed enemy also doesn't lock the exit. As friendlies, charmed creatures are affected by cards like Regroup and Rejuvenate, and they can accept most buffs that you'd normally be able to use on friendlies. You'll want to apply those quickly after the charm, though, so it's not still buffed once it turns back to the dark side. Charmed enemies beget Charmed Summons, with the full three turn duration, though it immediately drops to two after monster move. This episode's challenge is to charm an enemy which summons allies that end up killing it when the charm wears off. The Matrifigy challenge comes in three difficulties. The easy challenge is to charm an elven priest, which summons charmed cultists, which turn on and kill their master. The medium challenge is to charm a giant spider, which lays charmed eggs, which will hatch into charmed spiders, which eat their mama. The hard challenge is to charm a scab rat, which digs a charmed rat's nest, which produces charmed rats, which devour the scab rat. Hunter's Mark is a high power card that requires no roll, takes no action points, and can be used on enemies, including charmed, in long line of sight range. It applies two status effects, Revealed, which is permanent, and Marked, which lasts for three turns. Both effects work on all normal enemies. Bosses are a mixed bag, and I don't try it on a protected summoner. Revealed means you can still see the enemy, even when it's cloaked by darkness or out of sight around a corner. This unfortunately doesn't give you the ability to use melee attacks on it if it would normally be unseen. You still need to move up to it and actually see it before you can attack it. Marked causes all attacks to do an additional 3 damage. Suddenly, Bone, Vortex, and Near Misses with the Behemoth are doing 4 damage instead of 1. Environmental damage and poison damage is also cranked up to 4. So consider poisoning them early on if you can't take them out immediately. Even certain attacks which do no damage at all start doing 3. These are attacks which only do damage in certain situations, like how the Water Flask does 3 damage to a Corruption Core, and the Poison Bomb does 2 damage on a critical hit. Attacks which never do damage will still do 0 damage. Combos. Get the most out of your Hunter's Mark with cards that offer multiple attacks. Heaven's Fury does double damage for each hit. Moana's Master's Call with Kana gets up to plus 12 damage per turn. Repeating Ballista gets up to plus 9 damage. And a couple of rats or spiders give up to plus 6 damage. Aileen is a versatile character that operates well in any order. By putting her early on in the roster, the Hunter's Mark lets the remaining characters decimate any monsters before they get a chance to move. That's all for today. If you learned something, bullseye that like button, and may what you've learned here bring honor to your family. This has been my why. See you in Hellmar.